Hey guys, Dr. Brady Salcedo here with HackYourKeto.com and this morning we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting and autophagy and I'm going to break down what autophagy is in just a second but for those of you who aren't familiar with intermittent fasting you can check out a whole other video that will be linked right here for you where you can learn a little bit more about what intermittent fasting is and what are some of the incredible benefits. But to break it down real fast, intermittent fasting is where instead of eating every two to three hours like we're told to do to maximize your metabolism, you're only going to be eating within a certain window of the day and actually it's been shown to have some pretty amazing benefits for your metabolism and your hormonal system that can help you lose weight fast, it can help you burn fat at a rapid rate, at a healthy rate, and also maximize your brain performance, reduce inflammation, do some amazing things with your skin, your gut, there's so many amazing benefits that we talk about in a whole other video and we'll talk more about this in future videos as we go down the line. But I remember the first time that I had learned about intermittent fasting, I was in a biochemistry class and I remember a colleague of mine just saying how incredible the results he was getting from this thing called intermittent fasting. Now at the time I really loved food, I was on the program of eating every two to three hours, wasn't getting the same results as he was, but I loved food, I just I love to eat, right? And that's probably what made me 50 pounds heavier than I am right now and intermittent fasting has helped me lose 50 pounds. But essentially it just didn't make sense how he was getting such great results, how he looked great, he felt great, and here I am eating two to three, every two to three hours and I'm not getting the same results. What is going on? And when we look at our body here, when we look at how our body processes food and what happens when we eat every two to three hours, because that's what we were told, right? Eat every two to three hours to maximize your metabolism. But what happens is when we look at the gut, and if you're eating, and here's my terrible drawing of a stomach here, when you're eating and filling your gut with food every two to three hours, your body has to actually use energy to break down that food and actually use it to build different cells or to build your muscles. So some of these will actually go to build new skin. Some of this will go to build muscle. Some of this will go to your liver and all these different organs and systems that need to be replenished on a regular basis. And what happens is when you put food into your body, your body immediately knows that that's what needs to happen. And basically, essentially what it does is the body flips over into a growth mode. It's kind of what I would call it. There's tons of different processes behind this that we won't go into, but essentially this is growth mode because the body knows that when there is resources that are going to our gut, those resources need to go to build the body up. And this growth mode is really important you know, for many different reasons and especially when you're a kid we want to be in growth mode because we need to build muscles and bones and all these different things. But the problem is if we're getting into this every two to three hours, our body never gets a chance to get into the other mode which would be your repair mode. So there's a time for building and there's a time for cleansing and going through and taking stock of everything and making sure that we're repairing some of these cells that have been wearing down over the course of the time. So when we look at this, let's break this down just a little bit more. So when you look at your body, okay, and we look at this growth mode here, as you go throughout your life, you have these healthy cells, right? So you just built these really healthy, vibrant cells, right? But over time, what happens is as they go about doing their job, doing their normal routine, over time, one, they're going to get old or they're going to get damaged or they're just going to get sick and they're not going to do their job well. So what happens is you have amongst these healthy cells, some sick and damaged cells. Now, if we're constantly in growth mode, we're just going to keep building, 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 and sometimes we'll be building on faulty foundation. We're going to be building on these unhealthy cells and what happens is when these cells, these sick and maybe some of these damaged cells, what happens is they start to create more inflammation. Have you ever heard that saying, you're only as strong as your weakest link? Same thing goes with your cells and over time these cells start to wreak havoc on our body. They drain our energy, they create more inflammation, they rob us of optimal health. And so when we're constantly in growth mode, we never get a chance to actually take stock and get rid of some of these bad cells. And so this is where autophagy comes into play. Autophagy, I'll write this out for you. Autophagy right here, autophagy. Autophagy is essentially when our body says, okay, now that we're not having to use energy to digest food, 
We're going to use that energy now to take stock and take a look at these cells and get rid of sick, damaged, unhealthy cells, leaving the vibrant, healthy cells. See what I mean? This is basically our body's natural recycling or detoxing center or system. And so essentially when we're eating every two to three hours, we never actually get a chance to access this autophagy. But what intermittent fasting does is it gives your body this longer window to say, hey, take your time, go through this autophagy, get rid of some of those sick and damaged cells. But here's something else that happens. So when autophagy gets stimulated, and when your body begins to break down some of these sick and damaged cells, what it will do is it'll take this sick cell, let's say, and what it will do is it'll say, okay, well, out of this sick and damaged cell, this is healthy, this is healthy, this is healthy, and it'll actually break it down into its subsequent parts. I can't draw, so don't judge me. So it'll break it down into its subsequent parts and say, these are still good. What if we could use some of those to actually build upon healthy cells that just need a little bit of repair or to use them to create brand new cells? And it'll actually take those good parts and use them for your body's purposes. And what it'll then do is it'll get rid of these bad parts that were causing damage and inflammation to your body. Does that make sense? And so autophagy is a really powerful way for our body to start to access this cleansing detoxification system. And this is a really powerful way for your body to reduce inflammation. Let's take a look here. So one of the biggest things that you'll see is reduced inflammation from this. Because what happens is now that your body's not having to waste tons of energy to keep up with these sick and damaged cells. It'll reduce inflammation, which can do amazing things for your brain, improve cognitive performance, give you more energy. It can also do amazing things for your skin as well, because if you have a lot of inflammation in your skin, that can do some pretty terrible things to your skin as well. It can also help with your gut as well. Your gut is extremely sensitive to inflammation. It's basically your second brain. And so when you're allowing your gut to reduce inflammation, that can do some pretty substantial things for your digestive system, as well as your hormonal system, inflammation, overall health. Your gut is so important, so valuable. And so that's going to play a big role in that. Now, I do want to touch on something else because fasting is one way that you can stimulate autophagy. There are other ways that you can stimulate autophagy. So I want to go into some of those real quick just to give you extra ammo because yes, intermittent fasting is the first way. That's one of the best ways to stimulate autophagy. But here's some other ways here. And I imagine you probably know where I'm going with the next one is keto. Keto is another way that you can continually stimulate autophagy, especially when you're combining keto with intermittent fasting is a great way to stimulate autophagy. Now, the other thing with this too, especially if you're going keto, you could easily put in bad fats. Like let's say it's coming from not so great quality fats like McDonald's or just poor quality fats, maybe more um, vegetable oils, which can typically be more rancid, have other issues that are associated with them. But if you're using more, omega-3s like DHA and ALA, EPA, what happens is these are very highly anti-inflammatory. Also, they do some amazing things to promote autophagy. They're also the building blocks for your brain and your anti-inflammatory system. So there's some really powerful benefits with those omega-3s. So by supplementing healthy omega-3s into your ketogenic diet and keeping your body in ketosis, you're going to be making sure you're getting the maximum benefit from autophagy. Now, the other one here is exercise. Exercise is a powerful way to stimulate autophagy. Primarily, when it comes to exercise, is going to be your aerobic exercise. Now aerobic exercise would be things like running, jogging, hiking, swimming, rowing, things like that. Things that are more in your low to moderate intensity that's going to allow your body to continually flush things out. What research has shown is that things like resistance training and high intensity put a little bit more stress on the body and don't stimulate autophagy in the same way that aerobic exercise does. Now the other one here, and some of you may be very excited to hear this, some of the other ways that you can stimulate autophagy is through coffee and green tea. Now both of these 
are very powerful stimulants of autophagy as well. Coffee is one of the best ones. The key thing here is you want to get good quality resources here. You want to get good quality coffee, organic. You want to also make sure that you're preserving the oils of the coffee. So this is when you're going to want to use something like a French press because a lot of the oils in coffee is where you get the polyphenols and the healthy fats are found. So polyphenols are basically antioxidants. They're very anti-inflammatory but also can promote autophagy, which is really, really important. So you can use coffee, green tea, those are some great options there as well. Now another one that's a very interesting one is resveratrol. And pardon my writing here, it's absolutely terrible, but resveratrol is really interesting. Resveratrol actually stimulates or activates a specific gene that actually increases autophagy. So it acts by specifically activating that gene that regulates autophagy and upregulates it. So it's going to upregulate your autophagy in general. Now resveratrol you typically get associated with wine. Now there's debate on whether you know drinking wine will have as much benefit as resveratrol itself. So one of the best ways that you can get that is just by supplementing with it. You can find it at any natural grocer, grocery store or health food store as well. Now the last option here, and I've talked about this several times, is curcumin. Curcumin is this other one here that's a great option for increasing autophagy as well. It does some amazing things for your brain and for your body. Highly, highly anti-inflammatory. One of the most anti-inflammatory substances that you can get. And this would be found in things like turmeric and things like that. 